Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Phil East today. East today? That's right. Out in San Diego. Right, with Mono Guarantee Insurance. Well, sure. How are you, Phil? It's been a long time. I'm fine, yes. I know it has. Uh, how'd you like to take a little run out here, Johnny? Sunny Southern California? Why not? Okay. Now, according to this plane schedule I'm looking at, if you can get a move on, you can just about make connections on one of the jets coming out this way. Good. I'll pick you up at the airport. See you, Johnny. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. Yes? Give me something to worry about along the way. What's your problem? <laughs> Burglary. Oh? Or rather, a whole series of them. I see. Yep, all directed at the same man. Or rather, man and wife. Whole series of them, hmm? Right. What's been taken? The same thing every time, Johnny. That's all what? Hold your hat. I'm holding. Just exactly nothing. All right, I'll grab... What was that? You heard me. Well, I asked you what had been stolen. Yes, that's right. And you right. said exactly nothing. Right. That doesn't make sense. I know. But now you'll have to hurry to make your plane. Goodbye. Phil, just a minute. I'll be here and waiting for you. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company office in San Diego, California. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the double-barreled matter. <laughs> Expense account item one... After I'd grabbed some breakfast and packed a couple of bags, five fifty for a cab out to Bradley Field. Item two, $180.40 plane fare to New York, to Los Angeles, to San Diego. Thanks to one of the newer jets on that swing across the country, it was only a few minutes after noon, Pacific time, that is, when the plane landed at San Diego's Lindbergh Field which, incidentally, is only about a mile south of the city's main business district. San Diego, you know, was California's oldest Spanish settlement, the spot where California's modern history got its start. Also, I've heard, it's the town that has the ideal climate that Los Angeles talks about having. Anyway, it's a nice town with nice people a busy naval and fishing port, and a popular year-round tourist resort. The latter because of its miles of clean beaches, fine motels, and, as I said, wonderful climate. I like it. Phil yesterday was waiting for me. We piled into his car, drove to his office, and he told me what it was all about. That's right, burglaries. But, Phil, if nothing's been taken... Now, look it up, Johnny. Burglary means breaking and entering with intent to commit a felony. Whether that felonious purpose is accomplished or not. All right, Mr. Webster, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, when you've had to use those definitions correctly, as often as I have in connections with insurance claims, you... well, the point is, Johnny, that Mr. and Mrs. Warner's apartment's been broken into some seven times now. Seven times in a row, over a period of about two months. Warner... Yeah, Charles Hastings Warner and his wife, Trudy. He's a... Well, now to come to think of it, I don't know what he is. What he does for a living. But if the size of his insurance policies means anything, he does all right. His straight life alone has a face value of nearly a million. Mm. That could be, I suppose, that he's simply retired out here. He came out originally from Chicago, I, th I think. I see. Um... Phil, what do the police think about these burglaries? Well, that's just it, Johnny. They were never reported to the police. Why not? How did you find out about them? <laughs> well, my wife plays bridge a couple of times a week. Well, one of the group is Trudy Warner. Well, Trudy told her, she told me, 
So I called up Mrs. Warner and got the story. All right, now answer the first part of my question. What, about the police? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, she said that as long as nothing's been missing, her husband, Charlie, said there was no point in bothering them. But it kind of has truly worried, never knowing whether it's going to happen again or when they might clean out the place. Now, if you ask me, Johnny, I think it looks kind of (laughs) peculiar. That's the understatement of the week. Right. And I think we ought to do something about it. Seven times in a row, you said. That's right. And absolutely nothing taken. Absolutely nothing. Now, that is peculiar, Phil. Very. Well, that's why I called you up as soon as I heard about it. You know, one of these days, they'll find whatever it is they're looking for, and we'll find ourselves faced with a hefty claim. I wonder. Uh, What do you mean by that? I just wonder, that's all. Want to give me their address? Sure. And uh, you might call and tell them I'm on my way out. Hmm? Right. Uh, no. What? On second thought, just give me their address. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Expense account item three, $50 deposit on a rental car. The Warner's apartment was really a single, detached cottage in back of one of the better hotels. Very nice, very exclusive, very expensive. Rather than go into all the details later, let me tell you right now that it was expensively furnished, too. Thick wall-to-wall carpeting, fine furniture, everything very modern but in good taste. Obviously the work of a high-priced decorator. As uh, for Mrs. Trudy Warner, well, she was... 25 or 26, tall, statuesque and blonde with just enough makeup to enhance her natural beauty. She had a rather distinguished look, a quiet sort of dignity in her bearing. She wore a house coat of fine oriental silk, long jeweled earrings with enough diamonds to choke a horse, but also in good taste. A couple of bracelets and the gold band of her watch were set in gems, and I'm sure that the huge stone in one of her well-chosen rings was a genuine ruby. At first glance, this all meant wealth, social status, a blue blood. But when in response to my knock, she opened the door and then opened her mouth. Yeah? Mrs. Warner? Yeah, that's me. Who are you, huh? <coughs> Uh, my name is Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Yeah, I ever seen you around anywhere before? I doubt it. Well, then, listen, is, I'm... Uh, is Mr. Warner at home? No, he ain't. He's gone away for a couple of days. But no fooling around, Buster, so you better get back in your bicycle and scram. Uh, Bye. Uh, just, just, just a minute. Hey, Mr. now, get Warner. your foot out of this door. You want I should scream for help or something? No, that won't be necessary. Believe me, I'm here because I represent your husband's insurance company. Well, you do, huh? Well, can you prove it? Well, here, uh, let me show you my credentials. Oh, okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. Well, what do you want to see him about, huh? Well, about those burglaries you've been having. Oh, about those people busting in here, going through all our uh, stuff all the time, hmm? That's right. Boy, am I glad to see you, Johnny. How'd you find out about it? Well, I, uh... Just happened to be here in town and talking with Mr. Easterday. Oh, yeah. I just knew I shouldn't have told that insurance guy's wife at that bridge the other day. And when he called me up and made me tell him more about it, but there wasn't ever anything stolen, so there wasn't anything he could do about it, he said. Only why Charlie wouldn't call the cops in, I'll never know. Mm. May I come in, Mrs. Warner? Huh? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, come in. Thank you. But if Charlie finds out, I mean, he's not even wanting to bother the cops. Well, maybe he won't like this. I don't know why not. I'm glad you're going to do something about it, because I asked you, Johnny, what if I was to come in from shopping or something? I mean, like in broad daylight. Like like when Charlie was away like this, and maybe find somebody's busted in and was still here and pulled a gun on me or something. Sit down, huh? Oh, uh, thanks. These, uh, these burglaries have all occurred while your husband was away? Uh-uh. No, it's always 
Right after he's come home again, and we've been out somewhere at night together. We do a lot of night clubbing and stuff, and he even sometimes go up to L.A. Mm -hmm. And then they always go through everything with a fine tooth comb, even pulling up the rugs and taking the beds apart where they never steal nothing. I don't get it. Well, I also don't like it neither. No, I can't say I blame you. Uh, and, and your husband? Charlie? Mm. Well, all he says is it's probably just some crazy hophead or something, or a psych... Psycho... Uh, uh, psychopath? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. And, and as long as he don't take anything, we should worry. Only I don't like it. Mm. But that's his only explanation, though, for nothing being taken. Well, that's his only one. Gee. I don't know how he can take it so... So cool and casual, but that's the way he is, Johnny. Just real cool and casual about everything. You could fire a gun under him. He wouldn't even blink his eyelash. Anybody ever tried that, firing a gun hmm? under him? A nice, sweet guy like Charlie? Of course not. You want a drink, Charlie? Uh, Johnny. That's all right. That's all right. No, no, thank you. Tell me, um, what's your husband do for a living, Mrs. Warner? Only it's Trudy, Johnny. No use being formal, huh? All right, Trudy. Only that's no invitation like you should get fresh or anything. You remember oh, that? Oh, indeed I will. Okay. I remember that. Are you sure you don't want a little drink? No, I really don't. Thanks very much. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to have another one. Oh, you go uh, ahead. If you pardon me, oh, please. You just help yourself. You, uh, you started telling me about your husband's business. Oh, he hasn't got any business, Johnny. At least not since I met him out here in Dago and married him. I see. Do you know what he did before? Well, why should I care, huh? As long as he keeps the money coming in and treats me good like he does. Are you, you sure, Johnny? Just to keep me company. No, I'm sure. Uh, if he has money coming in, uh, where does it come from, Trudy? So I'll give you the same answer he always gives me when I asked him. Well? Didn't you never hear of the stock market? That's what he says. Oh, I see. Oh. Uh, where did you say he is now? I didn't. But he's gone hunting like he always does. Always? Well, almost every week lately. Oh? Where, do you know? Oh, well, sure, I know. It's down near El Centro. You know where that is? Somewhere down near the border, I believe. Yeah, down there in all that farm country in the Imperial, um, something, Imperial Valley. Oh, uh, yes, I, uh, I understand there's a lot of dove shooting down there in the Imperial Valley. Yeah, doves or pigeons or whatever they are, only he always calls them pigeons. Oh, yeah? Little tiny things, a lot of feathers, only, you only get a mouthful out of them, I always get... Suck, I have to cook him for him, but he's always so nice to me, so why not? Sure. I'm a good cook, too, Johnny. You wouldn't believe it, but I am. Oh, I bet you are. Uh, tell me, do you know where he stays down there? Well, sure. I always call him up on the phone every night while he's gone. It's the Bluebird Motor Court. It's a real swell place. I've seen it myself a couple of times when him and me was on our honeymoon. Uh, w when did he leave? Oh, uh, early this morning. That means he won't be back until the uh, day after tomorrow. Only what are you going to do about this burglar and bit, Johnny? Gee, I'm not sure yet, Trudy. Well, whatever it is, I sure hope you do. Only don't let on to Charlie I said anything about it, will you, honey? Well, if you won't, I won't. Oh, well, don't you worry about that. Is it not even a short one, Johnny? Just to keep me company. Well, all right. Just a short one. More conversation, but no more information of any consequence. After the uh, second short one, and just to keep her company, believe me. I left and drove to the nearest shopping section, picked up a handful of change, dove into a phone booth, and spent item four, 80 cents, on calls to all the stockbrokers in town. Not one of them had ever heard of Mr. Charles Hastings Warner. Okay. 
Item five, 390 for a call to an old friend of mine in Chicago, Pete Fuller, a feature writer for the Chicago Sun-Times. Charles Hastings Warner? Are you kidding, John? You don't know who Chicky Warner is? Or rather, was when he was operating here in Chai? And you in the private eye business? Well, brother, leave me poor you an earful. I hope you got plenty of dimes to feed that slot machine you're talking through. I can only tell you this. By the time Pete Fuller got through giving me a rundown on Chick Warner, it suddenly began to look as though I'd got myself involved in one of the most important and possibly one of the most dangerous cases in my whole career. back in San Diego in less than two days, I decided that I'd better act fast. Act on a hunch? That's all it was, but for once I felt there was plenty of reason for it, and not because of the circumstances, the burglaries, but the character of the man I now knew I'd be dealing with. I spent item six in one of the local sporting goods stores. For a total of $314.61, I came out with some lightweight hunting clothes, a pair of bird shooter boots, a good quality double barrel 12 gauge shotgun, and three boxes of shells loaded with number nine bird shot. I also bought a hunting license. I piled the stuff into my rental car and headed east on Highway 80, making time now because it was getting dark. A little over a hundred miles later, near a place called Coyote Wells, I pulled off the road and gave the hunting clothes a little age and character by the simple expedient of driving the car over them a couple of times. When I got to El Centro, I took a room at the Bluebird Motor Court. Quite a place. Not only 20 or 30 nice modern motel cottages, but a big fancy dining room with a bar attached. And it was in the bar that I met Mr. Charles Hastings Warner. of about 50, tall, lean, gray, and with gray eyes, kind of a prominent aquiline nose, an almost prim sort of mouth with thin lips. It was late and the bar was almost empty, so it wasn't too hard to make conversation with him. Why, oh, yes. Matter of fact, I am here to do some pigeon shooting. How'd you know? Oh, I, I didn't, Mr. Uh, uh, Warner, is it? Yeah. I just hope to find somebody around here who could tell me where to go for some birds. I took a chance on talking to you, and it looks as though I picked the right man. Oh, I can tell you where to go, all right. Find lots of pigeons. Aren't they really doves, though? Don't know the way you can knock them off so easy, I like to think of them as pigeons. <laughs> uh, another drink, baby? Yeah, I'll buy it. You bought the last four. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Waiter, a couple more of these. Yes, sir. If uh, you can lead me to some good shooting, it's certainly worth a couple of drinks. Lead you? Well, do you mind if I kind of tag along with you tomorrow? Well, I mostly like to go alone, Dollar, but sure, sure, why not? Good. I'll make two of you. Two of us? Yeah, yeah, I promised some other guy I'd let him come along. His name is Al Melford. In the bartender, somebody that I always bring in the pigeons, he lights down to me. Bought me a couple of drinks like you did. So I couldn't turn him down. Mm -hmm. Besides, maybe it's good to have a couple of witnesses along. Witnesses? Sure. To what? You know, to see I don't come back with over my limit. Oh. What'd you think? Oh, I had no idea. Also, I don't know how good a shot this Al Melford is. Just met him today, so you you can be along to make sure you don't blow my head off by mistake. <laughs> You're not serious. Dollar, a man has a gun on him. You never know. Remember that. Early the next morning, far too early for my money, was long before sunrise. The three of us, Chick Warner, Al Milford, and I, set out in Warner's car. We headed south across the flat desert and farmland to and through Calexico. 
Within spitting distance of the border, we turned right and then hit a narrow, dusty road that wound around so much I wondered a couple of times if we weren't getting a little too close to Mexico. Al Milford, by the way, put me on guard. 35 or so, there was a kind of shiftiness about him that I didn't like. I began to wonder if I'd walked myself into a trap of some kind. Finally, Chick stopped and deployed us around a vast, heavy cover of what I believe they call deer brush. Oh, there must have been several acres of it, and mesquite and sage that was higher than my head. Al went to the north end, I to the west, and Warner to the south, and we waited. Sure enough, as soon as the sun came up, as Warner promised, the birds started rising. For the next 10 or 15 minutes or so, I had more action than I'd ever dreamed possible in bird shooting. But I noticed two things. Chick Warner's shooting was only one blast at a time. And more important, after the first big flurry, there wasn't a sound from Al's gun. I worked my way slowly, cautiously toward the spot where Chick Warner supposedly had his stand. What I came on stopped me in my tracks. Al Milford, lying prone, his shotgun aimed toward the spot where Warner should have been, and beside him in reach, a 38 revolver. As I sneaked up on him, he suddenly quietly swung around, and I found myself staring into the barrel of that gun. Just take it easy, Doc. Yeah. Before you do anything silly, just take a... Take a look at these. My credentials. Catch. Credentials, hmm? I know who you are, but you don't know who I am, so you better look. You think I'll argue with you as long as... Oh. Yeah. Narcotic score. That's right. Now listen. Put down your gun and listen before he gets back here. Sure. He's been quiet quite a while now, so I think he's made his haul. What? Don't you see? We know how he gets the stuff across the border. Stuff? White stuff, heroin, pure, uncut heroin. Uh, I figured as much from his record in Chicago. Sure. Now he picks it up on these so-called hunting trips. From a contact just across the border. Yeah, and he always has company, a witness who would swear he just came out here shooting, sometimes one of our men. But none of them has ever found the stuff on him. Then those raids in his apartment, yours. I didn't say that, Johnny. But strip him down, strip his apartment, there's never a sign of it. Yet somehow he's not only getting it, but storing it and spreading it around up north. And somehow I've got to find out what he does with it after he picks it up here. Where he hides it. You'll never know that. Warner. Oh. All right, Warner. No. No, Dollar. You reach for that gun, you get this other barrel. That wasn't any bird shot at him. That was a slug. I can see that. Okay. Pick up that handgun of his. With your left hand. Toss it over here. But real careful. Go on, do it. I say toss me his gun or I give you this other barrel. What's the matter, you blind? They only use one shot on him. This gun's a double. Can't you see that? Sure, Warner. Do like I tell you. You want this other barrel? Yes, Warner, I think I do. Stay back or you'll get it. Stay back, stay back! Clever, Warner. Clever hiding place when you took the stuff home. Get back. Not even the experts could find it there at your cottage. Get back, I tell you. And out here, after birds, only one shot at a time, hmm? That's what gave you away. You hear me? I'll pull this trigger. And let the hammer fall on the barrel full of the white stuff that it's loaded with? Why bother, Warner? Okay, Dollar, listen. I'll make a deal with you. The stuff in this other barrel is worth a lot of dough. You want to talk? You want to make a deal? Sure. Sorry, Warner. I'm afraid the only deal I'll make with you is this. Ah! All right, Al, are you still with us? Sure. Sure, Johnny, but it just caught my arm. 
If you can carry me back to the car. I take it easy, take it easy, Al. Oh, our friend here comes around as a reward for his cleverness. We'll let him carry you back. That one shotgun barrel loaded with heroin? Sure, it was only a guess, but thank heaven it was the right one. You know, for a second there, I was afraid he might have a shell in it. Expense count total, including the trip on back to Hartford. Call it 760 even, and cheap at half the price. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. tell you about next week's story. Next week, one of the rottenest rackets in the world, but a story with a real twist at the end. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Santos Ortega as Charles Warner, Elizabeth Lawrence as Trudy, Court Benson as Phil Easterday, Carl Frank as Al Milford, and Robert Dryden as Pete. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking.